Welcome back. You're listening to the Mara Mukwanda Show on Salam Media, and we are also live on Facebook. Thank you for joining us on this rather cold June 16th day. I hope you are keeping warm. I know I am, but my feet are freezing. But anyways, the show must go on. It is 11.33 and it is time for our marriage segment. If you have any comments, queries, questions or suggestions, you can send them to us on WhatsApp. The number is 061-766-0325. Alternatively, you can leave your comments in the comments section below on Facebook and also drop us your DMs on uh, Instagram and Twitter. So joining me right now is uh, marriage coach and author Margaret Hungwe. If uh, you remember correctly, I interviewed her about two weeks ago uh, on her book. We did a book review. And uh, today she is joining me on the line to talk about fatigue, which happens to be the common enemy of a happy marriage. Uh, good morning, Margaret. Thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you. Good morning, Marian. How are you? Yes, it is a, such a Thanks, cold yes. day. Oh, yes. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure once again. Now, fatigue is not something that uh, we often think of when it comes to um, being a contributor to, um, you know, an enemy of a happy marriage. You know, we always just brush it under the carpet and look, or, uh, look at it as something which everyone goes through whether married or single but you know it happens to be a, a common enemy what what is relationship fatigue all right thank you marianne for having me today and uh, to all to all the other viewers that were, are watching live right now so probably we should start with asking ourselves what is fatigue you know because that word might probably seem big to other people so when you go to anti google you go to google just to check the meaning of fatigue, you see that there are words like low energy, lack of motivation, lack of, of you are feeling tired, you feel like you want to give up. So now when you connect that to a relationship, when someone is saying that they are no longer motivated being in a marriage or they are still there, but they've got low energy, there is nothing that they are feeling anymore. That becomes something that is dangerous to a marriage or to a relationship. So in this context of a marriage where we talk of fatigue, this is when a couple, it's either the husband or a wife, or even in a relationship of, uh, of, some, of, of two people that are in courtship, are feeling that they're just tired of this relationship. Either they just want out or they no longer even feel that energy to continue going on into, into, in that relationship due to several reasons why they are feeling that. And some, just to look at some of the issues that you might see or that causes fatigue in a marriage, there are several, and I actually listed a little bit, uh, about five points that speaks to fatigue, which we'll go into, in, into detail just now. All right. Okay. So, you know, when um, I was uh, reading up on this topic of relationship fatigue, you know, I, I, I thought it was just, you know, just being tired in a relationship, but, but not, not being tired as, you know, you're tired of this relationship and you want out. I thought it's just, you know, just as, as a normal person who gets tired, gets fatigued, and uh, you're looking for ways to um, remove that fatigue and to boost your energy. But there's more to it than just that. All right, uh, uh, please go into the points on uh, what uh, causes relationship fatigue. All right. So for real, there are two types of it. The one that you've alluded to just now and the other one is like, you know what? I no longer want this thing. I'm just exhausted over it. I think I've just been using too much of myself such that, that I'm now running on empty when it comes to love. So some of the causes of fatigue in marriage is familiarity breeds contempt. Breeds contempt. So what happens in marriage is that we become familiar with each other. We see each other every day. I know that my husband is still going to come back home. He himself, he might be saying, probably is at work. He comes anytime that he wants because he's still just going to find his wife home and his kids home. So that familiarity of no longer wanting to do more towards the relationship, it actually makes someone go into that mode of saying, you know what, I'm now tired. I'm just now on low energy. Why? Because I feel like I'm being taken for granted. You know, I'm not, I'm not really valued in this relationship. My husband or my wife is not seeing what I'm contributing to it, such that I just feel like there is nothing that I'm getting out of this relationship. And also another point is to say, when you are taking me for granted, what is it that you see in me? Probably in my mind, I'm now thinking that 
there is nothing beautiful about me anymore. For an example, when you look at, at women, some of the women, they are stay-at-home moms, right? So your husband just comes home anytime that he wants. And when he comes, he starts to feel like you're being taken for granted because I'm a stay-at-home mom. I'm not contributing probably even financially, while you are actually doing so much as a wife in the home. So now these feelings of being taken for granted starts to make you feel like probably I'm not beautiful anymore. Maybe my husband, when he's at work, he sees other beautiful women out there and me i'm just at home making sure kids have done homework i've cooked the house is clean so that brings even resentment inside of your heart to say okay so if i'm not valued what more can i even contribute to to this relationship then also another point is to say it can become also a transactional relationship where a husband might feel i am in this marriage just for what i'm bringing in for an example, a husband just walks in the door. Then you start asking the questions. I received uh, a municipal bill. Do, you didn't pay the fees. Or I'm, I need a new hairstyle. I need to do my nails. I need, I need, I need. It's now so much of transactional. And I'm asking you for money all the time. So the husband might end up just feeling like, you know, I am in this relationship for what I am bringing in. Not of us being a companion, not for us being in, in a sound relationship where both of us, we are loving each other. So, so a transactional relationship really makes the relation go sour or someone starts to have feelings of being tired or of just giving up in that relationship. Another point also is bottling up issues. So we find even when we do counseling sessions, couples, you can bottle issues. You don't talk about what's happening in the marriage or what have really gone bad. So you, you just continue bottling issues. If anything happens, you just keep it at the back of your mind. So that one day you actually burst. So when you burst many times, the words that comes out of that, that setup now when you are bursting or the way you come in or, and, or the way that your spouse is going to receive you, sometimes you cannot go back to it because when words have been released, they are very, it's difficult to take them back. So bottling up issues also leads to fatigue. For an example, you continue to bottle up issues. You are bottling up. So what happens is that these issues are being saved at the back of your mind. So that when you look at your spouse, you are not motivated anymore. When you just look at them, you can just dismiss them with a wave of your hand because they are not getting you to where you want to be or they are not even bringing that which you are expecting because expectations here are not being met. You are not speaking your expectations. Your spouse maybe also is ignoring or doesn't even have any idea of what's happening in your mind. So the issues continues to build up to the point whereby sometimes it, it's no return, you know. And another thing, another point also is work, friends business you know when when it takes over in a relationship it means that the marriage suffer, suffers or this relationship is going to suffer because i'm now putting more effort on the mer on my work i'm putting more effort on my business or even on my friends we want to hang out you don't have time even on on, on social media itself there is so much that happens in a marriage setup or even in in a relationship that takes over and then it impacts on the levels of energy it impacts on the being motivated of bringing more into a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, all right, I'd, I'd like to know more about um, uh, keeping score. What about at that point? I know sometimes uh, you mentioned earlier on about uh, being a stay-at-home mom who does everything and um, you know, sometimes we, 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 we reach to a point whereby maybe there's a young child and then you'll be sleeping there and like, oh, but it's your turn to do it. It's your turn to get up. And I did it yesterday and I always do it. What about that? So when in a, in a relationship, you, there is no good or what I would say effective communication, you keep scores. You are not mm -hmm. communicating. You are not saying what you are expecting from your spouse such that you are saying to, into your mind, you're supposed to think. Mm -hmm. I would give an example. Sometimes... It's in court. Sometimes men don't even think that far, right? You're expecting your husband or your spouse to say, okay, honey, today it's my turn. Let me look after the kids. You go and take a nap or just have some me time, right? Sometimes they don't even think that far. They actually want you to verbalize this, to say, babes, I think this is today, please, can you just take over? So the expectation here is that he is supposed to think, I've been with the kids, or I've been doing this for so long, so why is not thinking? It's, you are not communicating. So in a relationship, in a marriage, if you do not communicate, the relationship suffers. 
You cannot get into someone's mind and expect them to think the same way you are thinking. It doesn't work like that. When we look at us women, we can think about task a lot. Look at your husband. Can they more task the way you do as a woman? Not at all. Yes, they are bright. They are good. But when it comes to more tasking or even thinking sometimes to the level that you, you are expecting him to, he doesn't. So what is important is to talk. Communicate what you are feeling. And don't wait when you are feeling very low. Don't wait until you are feeling anxious even. Or even when you just feel like I'm about to burst now. That it, it's not going to work. Communicate all the time. You have a relationship that you are able to speak all the time with no issues bottling, being bottled up, with no issues coming in. You know, when you bank issues, the day when you want to say them, the other spouse is actually surprised or shocked. They are wondering, where is this all coming from? I'm married myself. I remember in my first years, my husband was actually asking me, where is this all coming from? But I thought we were fine. And I'll go like, you thought we were fine? Like, are you serious? You know, because I was expecting him to think as me. It doesn't work like that. Not at all. Talk, communicate as a couple. Mm, and I know as women, we have that problem of uh, not talking because we expect our husbands to know what we're thinking or we want them to know what we're thinking. I mean, it's even even little things like the habits in the household. You know, we just expect them to know that, hey, you're supposed to put things the way you found them. But yes. obviously, that's not the case. Unless you verbalize it, then perhaps they'll change and uh doing uh start doing what you want them to do all right uh, we have a comment here from uh, titi masvita says watching all the way from zimbabwe and Gezi. thank you for joining us and i hope you are keeping warm also communicate all the time yes yes do not bottle things up uh, uh stay with us margaret uh, and uh, titi we're going to take a quick break and when we come back we'll have uh, solutions on how to deal with uh, fatigue in the marriage Connect and stay ahead with Salam Media. This is Salam Media, coming to you live from South Africa. Doozy Med Medicine Depot Retail Pharmacy and Emergency Medical Depot. Conveniently situated in the Doozy Med Medical Center, Corner Burger and Bossel Street, Peter Marisburg. We provide safe, affordable and convenient medical facilities. Open till 10 p.m. every day of the year. We have a full house clinic that operates from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., which is run by a qualified sister. The clinic offers immunization, vaccination, wellness, general consultation, and more. Call Doozy Med Medicine Depot on 033-3421200. Doozy Med Medicine Depot, your pharmacy of choice. Once again, winter has made itself known and thousands are left to face this harsh season in utter destitution. Assist those in need this winter by sponsoring a blanket and mask for only 150 rand or a winter humanitized pack for only 350 rand, which includes blankets, scarves, gloves, candles, beanies and masks. Call 011-834-8685 or donate online at Africa. AfricaMuslimsAgency.co.za. The AMA Winter Distribution runs throughout South Africa. Africa Muslims Agency, inspiring the spirit of giving. Dad, well, I've been chatting with an investment broker today and... Broker? Did the broker tell you that our economy is a mess? There's bushfires in Australia, America wanted World War III, and now the coronavirus is traveling around the world. Um... Uh... Well, I also thought about purchasing some crypto. Crypto? What's that? Like another pyramid scheme? I don't trust what I can't see. There's an apartment in Belita. So all your family would be asking to stay there for free. And what if the government takes it away, eh? Dad, I don't think it works like that. I'll tell you what works. Gold. At your age, I invested in gold coins and it paid for your university fees and your wedding. No contracts, no agreements. Your investment is in your hands and you own it. With a 70% growth in only five years, do you still doubt gold investment? Contact RJ Coin today. 031 202 4701 or visit them at 151 Stephen Lamini Road in Musgrave, Durban. Randery Jewelers Gold Coin Exchange, your passport to gold investment. You are listening to Mariam Makwanda live on Salam Media.
Welcome back. You are listening to the Mara Mukonda Show, and we are also live on Facebook for your viewing pleasure. And I hope you are keeping warm wherever you are uh, in the country. And uh, thank you for joining me. Still on the line is uh, Margaret Hongwe, who is an author as well as a marriage coach. And we are talking about fatigue in a marriage, actually the common enemy. And if you just joined us, unfortunately, you've missed out quite a bit on uh, the points that uh, Margaret shared with us. But uh, don't despair because this video will still be upload, will still be available on Facebook for you to view later on. Uh, so, Margaret, uh, obviously, when we have problems, we have to find solutions to them. So, how can we fix this problem of marriage fatigue? What do we need to do? All right. So earlier on, we spoke about communication, effective communication, and someone might say, mm -hmm. "But Margaret, what when you talk of communication, what are you talking about?" Right. So when you communicate with your spouse, you are looking for the things that are causing the fatigue in a relationship. You are talking about the issues that are affecting you as a couple, right? So it, their issues are going to come up to say, you know, when you speak to me or when you come home or when you come home late, this is how I feel, right? So in there, there are several issues that might actually arise as you communicate. So one of the things that you also need to do is when you communicate, don't be on the defensive. Don't tell your wife to say that I'm, I'm working so hard for this family. That's why I'm coming home late. No, that's not a good answer. Not at all. Yes, we know you are working hard. I'm also working hard in the house. When you come home to a clean home, when you come home to a hot meal, it did not cook itself. It means I, I'm here doing that for you. So let's try by all means to meet in the middle here to make sure that our relationship works. When your spouse talks to you about intimacy issues that I'm getting irritated or I'm getting tired or fatigued in the way we do love making in the house. In your mind, go back into your corner. Ask yourself questions like, okay, so how can I spice this thing up? What can I do to make sure that I'm at the same level with my spouse? Because at the end of the day, it's an enjoyment that you need both of you as a couple. So go back. I think of ways of up spicing it up. As you spice it up, always remember you need to appreciate each other as a couple. There is nothing that kills a relationship than negativism. If you are always finding fault. There is nothing good that you see. Appreciate your spouse. Say something about your spouse that is good or that is what they are doing good in the marriage. And when you do that, it makes them work even harder. Imagine when you work in late walks in the door late and you go like, you know what, babe, I'm so happy that you are working so hard for this family and I actually know that you are putting so much of effort. When he goes in his mind, he's going to say, you know what, my wife actually appreciates what I'm doing, but you know what I'm going to do tomorrow? I need to come home early to find that smile again, to find my wife welcoming. You might also think of ways of switching off distraction. What is it that distracts you? That is impacting your marriage. That is impacting your relationship. Do it, is it social media? Is it friends? We spoke earlier on about friends. Is it work? Whatever it is, switch it off. Focus on your relationship. Focus on your wife. Set time aside to say, you know what? You and, my, you and me, we are going to be doing this uh, at, at particular times. Also be spontaneous. Because sometimes when it's like, it's, it's like in a diary. It becomes so boring. Be spontaneous. Mm -hmm. Just come up and say, you know, let's go for a walk. It's not expensive to work on your marriage, you know. Taking a walk doesn't cost you anything. You walk, you are just having a good time. You are talking, holding hands. By the time you come back home, you are on another level already. The next thing, do you know what it leads to? Intimacy. Because you are gelling, you are understanding each other. Going for a, for, for, for a cup of coffee. At Mac, and, at Mac and Bean, going for an ice cream, at, at, ice cream at McDonald's costs you three rand fifty. You know, it's not expensive to work on your marriage. Also, be intentional in what you do. Go all out to make your spouse feel special. You know, I remember, I think it was in our first year of marriage. So I, I enjoy a vanilla cake. My husband loves a, a chocolate cake. So what you do, you walk in the, you, you come in, goes like, Max, I bought you a cake. Then I go like, yes, right? Then I find it's a chocolate cake. And I go like, but dude, you know, I love a vanilla cake. So to him, he was trying to solve for two. But for me, I love a vanilla cake. Until he understood what I like, my love languages. 
you know, the way I relate to my husband cannot be the same way you relate to your husband. Find out what works for your spouse and work on it. Be intentional in all that you do. Also, be someone who forgives. Marriage is work. But it gets beautiful as you go by, year by year. We spoke about people that have been in marriage for so long. Probably you've been, your husband or your wife did something to hurt you. And it's painful. You feel like, how could you do this to me? We never know the extent of the pain. But forgive. If you have decided to stick into this marriage or to stick into the relationship, you cannot always hold the card of blame. To say, but you did, but you did. When we have spoken about it, let's now walk and say, you know what? Let's move on now. I, I'm asking for forgiveness. Please forgive me. Don't continue to bring that issue up. You know Why? Because it's going to impact again. Because I'm going to feel more unmotivated to say, I've asked for forgiveness. Why would you continue to hold this card in front of me? And another thing also is love, love, love each other. There is never enough love. You can wake up in the morning, say you love me. Never only say I love you when, when it suits you or when you want something. Many times in marriage setup, you would find that the word love might come when it's intimacy time. It doesn't work like that. Always say the words, affirm your, 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 your spouse. Even if things have happened, when we talk of things, we spoke a lot of on of a forgiveness. We, we can also look at situations whereby the body has changed, you know, something has grown on you. Still love me the way I am because you knew me when I was a size eight. So what am I saying here is love, love, love each other. Never stop loving each other. And always find the things that makes you love together. You know, sometimes it's so sad when you see a couple driving in a car, they can't even talk to each other. The other is looking the, in, in the other direction. It becomes so sad. Moreover, even when kids are in the picture now, you cannot talk and laugh. You cannot joke. You cannot play games. To, simple games. You can't even do so. Why? Because you are all serious. Marriage is not supposed to be like that. Work on your relationship such that you don't get to a point of saying, I'm on low energy. I feel like I'm not doing enough or I'm not being appreciated in this marriage. Work on it. It is so possible to live a happy ever after. Now, um, speaking about love languages that you mentioned earlier, how long does it take for a person to learn their partner's love language? So I'll speak from, from experience, right? So what is important as a spouse for myself as a wife is to say, what does my husband like? Not what I like. What does, what does my husband like? So in there, I look at ways to make sure that I meet what he likes. Because... When I'm putting what I like first, it means there is going to be a disparity here. Look for the things that your husband likes. And how do you do so? Through communication as well and observing him. You know, what kind of food does he like? If I touch him this way, if I refer him to this way, if I respect him this way, if I do things this way. For an example, you would find a spouse who wants to be respected a lot, especially when his family is around right? That's his love language. Do so. So then my husband also needs to realize what I like, not what he likes, but what I like. And there you complement each other. Remember, a marriage or a relationship is not competition. So if you are on competition saying, I love to eat beef, then I'm coming, I'm saying, you know, I was thinking, let's have chicken today. And you go like, but you know that I love beef. It will not work. Resentment builds in. So find things that you love together and give each other time, give each other turns as well. In that, you'd actually realize that you are cementing this love. In terms of knowing, there is no time frame. For an example, I'm 17 years in marriage right now. I still discover some things that my husband likes right now, but I've been married to him for 17 years. We've got kids and all those things. So it is being, remember I said earlier on intentional, it's being intentional in wanting to know what he does he like more. And as he grows older also, as we get older in, in, in our marriage, what, what are the things that we're even now, now liking together that maybe we, do not matter when we first got into the marriage. So it's being intentional. It's being conscious of where you you are and where you are going. Mm -hmm. And uh, quickly, uh, just quick, uh, quickly uh, uh, tell us about um, having a, a positive mindset and an outlook because, you know, everything happens in the mind. And if we think it, then that's when we uh, speak it and react to it. 
true, true. I'll give you even an example. This is it's really a, a very important thing here. For an example, as women, we get exhausted. We are everywhere. We are doing so much, right? Such that night time comes, you are exhausted. You don't want anything, right? So if you don't tell your mind that makes, I want to please my husband. I want to be, I want to do this to my husband. You will not do it because the body already is telling you that you are tired. Secondly, as you move into marriage, as you move into the years, things might come. Sickness might come. I mean, people your spouse might lose a, his job. Things, so th when things come in, what are you telling your mind when you look at your spouse? Mm -hmm. For an example, we walked into, into a season where my husband lost his job for two years. It was tough financially. Why? Because we've got children that, that are going to school. We've got things that we need to take care in the house. So how did we manage that? It is telling myself that, you know what? It was not this case when my husband was not was working. He can actually do much more. So while at least we are in this situation, how do we make it work? Positive words. How do you even encourage him? Because at that point, I remember my husband feeling so low. He's saying to me, you know what? I feel like I'm not doing so much. I'm leaving you to do all these things. And you look at him and you say, you know what, Habi? I know you can do this thing. You have been doing it before and you can still do so. And you, you start to praise him. You start to say positive words to him. The next thing that you will do is you wake up there and go and look for a job. You wake up there and do even something in the house to just help or alleviate the pressure in the home. So there is, there is power in the words we utter to our spouses. There is power to the world that we will create in that negative situation to make it positive. What it takes is someone who is willing to build, who is willing to make sure that there is relationship work and is sustainable. Because imagine what you, when you continue to see the negative in your spouse, when you continue to see that he's not employed or my wife is not employed, how does that make them feel? They might end up feeling like they are useless. And such a word is, I mean, it's totally negative. It really makes someone to go on their laws. So what do you do? Build them up. And as you build them, you actually realize that they've got more to offer than what they've even been doing before. Mm -hmm. That's so true. And uh, obviously with this lockdown, many people will be losing their jobs or already have lost their jobs. So it's now time where we need to stick together even more and make things work. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Once again, Margaret, and it's been a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye. That bye -bye. was uh, Margaret. An author and a marriage coach uh, talking about fatigue in the marriage and how to overcome this uh, common enemy that is destroying marriages. And if you are a person who has been experiencing fatigue in a marriage, um, then uh, do listen to this interview. Uh, it will be, uh, it is actually available on Facebook. Uh, thank you for joining me. If you have any comments, questions, queries, or suggestions, you can send them to us on WhatsApp. The number is 061-766-0355. Alternatively, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. Just stay with us. We will be right back.